Hi, I'm Michelle. Welcome to Chocolate Box Cottage, where I share useful, beautiful, and thrifty ideas and recipes like the one I'm going to share with you today. Today we are going to make a Dutch baby. A Dutch baby is also called an oven pancake or a Dutch oven pancake, which should give you a clue about what it is. But a Dutch baby has an advantage of instead of pouring pancake batter into a skillet and standing over the stove, you simply mix everything together in a blender or a bowl, pour it into a skillet, and bake it. About 20 minutes later, you'll have a magnificent souffle-like creation that you can top with fruit and share with your family. It's special, it's scrumptious, and it's easy. I can hardly wait to share it with you. One of the things that I appreciate about a Dutch baby, besides the fact that it's delicious, is the fact that it uses such simple ingredients. And by simple, I mean things that most of us have on hand in our kitchens most of the time, and that includes eggs. We keep chickens, so I'll be using our own eggs today, and if you have access to your own chicken eggs, I'm sure you're gonna wanna give this recipe a try also. So about half an hour before you want to bake, Preheat your oven. I've set the oven for 425 degrees Fahrenheit, which is somewhere between 215 to 220 Celsius. And you wanna set your ingredients out at room temperature. So set your eggs out on the counter, pour the milk into a measuring cup, and let it sit out on the counter too while the oven is preheating. And let's talk about baking dish. I'm going to be using my one of my favorite tools in the kitchen today, which is my 10 inch cast iron skillet. It's well seasoned and just one, a real workhorse in the kitchen. If you don't have a cast iron skillet, don't worry. You can use a casserole dish. You can use just about any other baking pan. And I will have uh, alternatives listed in the description box below, as well as the recipe in both US standard and metric measurements. So my oven is preheated. And what I'm going to do is put the butter in the pan and you can use between two to four tablespoons of butter. I'll leave that up to you. And then pop the pan into the oven to heat. And what you're doing there is you're preheating the pan as well as melting the butter. And it is really important to have a good hot pan for a Dutch baby. So don't skip that step. Let's get started with our ingredients. We're going to use four eggs. And I've got a mix of chicken and duck eggs here. My duck eggs are about the same size as chicken eggs, so I'm just going to substitute one for one. If yours are very much larger, you may need to alter the recipe a bit. Four eggs. Um, there's two so far. Oh, and if you have the little tiny bantam chickens and you've got these little tiny eggs like this, you'll want to use two of these in place of one regular chicken egg. I'm just going to use regular eggs today. And there's our four. Now I'm using a Vitamix to make our Dutch baby, but you don't need to have a high speed blender. Just a regular household blender is just fine. You can even use a bowl with a whisk or a fork and that'll work as well. I'm gonna turn this on to high speed or medium high speed since it's a Vitamix and give it about a minute to process. Okay, and now we're going to add a cup of milk, and I'm going to put in a pinch of salt. If you're using salted butter, you may be able to get away with not adding any salt, but if you're just using a regular sweet cream butter, you may want to use between an eighth to a quarter teaspoon of salt. So the salt is in there. Our final ingredient is the flour. This is just regular all-purpose flour. And what I'd like to do is fluff it in the canister first so that I have nice fluffy flour. Need a full cup. And I am using unbleached all-purpose flour. This is a recipe that is not as successful with a whole wheat flour. You can get away with using maybe a quarter to a third whole wheat flour, but it really isn't 
it isn't going to rise as well. So I just stick with all purpose for this particular recipe. And normally I would be adding the ingredients through the top of the blender lid while it was running. But in the interest of having a quieter video, I turned the video off and we're doing it this way. So now we're going to let it run for about 30 seconds to mix everything really well. The pan has had about five minutes in the oven to preheat and melt the butter so it should be ready. And it is. Pour the batter into the pan. And it should be about the consistency of heavy cream. Carefully put this in the oven. And I'll set the timer for 20 minutes. Now while the Dutch baby is in the oven, I like to get the blender jar washed immediately. Well the timer just sounded, so let's check and see how our Dutch baby looks. Yes, it is done. Look at that. It's golden. It's got a nice crown on it. It's not quite as puffy as what I'd like to see, but it's still very nice. Let's cut into it and have a slice. Like a souffle or popovers, a Dutch baby is filled with air. So you might want to employ a trick that I've been using for years, and that is Call your family to the table about five minutes before the Dutch baby is done baking. That way they're all seated and they're ready to eat and they get to see it and appreciate it in all its poofy, magnificent glory. Well, let's give it a taste. Time for the, the best part, the eating, right? Okay. There we go. Nice golden wedge. And for toppings, you can be creative and use what you like. We have frozen berries because we pick a lot of berries in the summer, and so I'm going to put some blackberries and some huckleberries on top of mine. But sliced bananas are nice. Warm applesauce is really good. Actually, any kind of fruit that you enjoy, from peaches to cherries to berries, is really nice. Maple syrup is always a win. And I like to actually put a little bit on top of fruit too. It tastes really nice. Sometimes though you just need a really simple meal and so most often honestly we end up using powdered sugar and lemon juice. The powdered sugar adds a note of sweetness and a squeeze of fresh lemon just adds a little bit of brightness and combined with the richness of the butter and egg in a Dutch baby is really a delicious combination. And it's also really nice on top of fruit. I want to give you a peek at this here. Doesn't that look delicious? And now for the litmus test. I want to make sure I get a berry on top. Mm. Every bit as delicious as I remember. remember from the time I tasted my first one in third grade. This is really just such a nice meal. If you've had a really busy or hectic day and you need something easy to put on the table that doesn't take as much attention as pouring pancake batter, this might be your go-to choice. It also just feels more special than, um, than traditional pancakes, to me anyway. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And if you enjoyed this video, I hope you give it a like and consider subscribing. I'd love to get to know you more and uh, offer you more videos. I always appreciate our time together. Thank you for visiting me today in Chocolate Box Cottage. It's been a pleasure. Goodbye and God bless.